Hi and welcome to tutorial 58 in this series of tutorials and programs which focus on TradeStation Easy Language. Uh, if you're not part of our email list then please go to markplex.com that's M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X dot com and sign up and I'll be happy to uh, send you emails when I create new tutorials and programs. And uh, today's tutorial I was asked by somebody on the list uh, how it would be possible to draw text under bars for the RSI and uh, it's actually something that's very simple to do and this is a beginner level tutorial so what I've done is opened a pound dollar five minute chart and then what I've done is applied to that the RSI indicator so we can see what the uh, the value of the RSI indicator is and what's that showing here is changing color when the RSI is over 60 so what we're going to do is create a simple show me study that writes the value of the RSI underneath the bar or at the low of the bar every time the RSI is greater or equal to 60 so let's go ahead and do that I've already opened the development environment if you're using version 9 this is now a separate a separate window but this will work on other versions of the trade station so first of all we're going to say value 1 and remember you can use value 1 through 99 without declaring the variables is equal to RSI and we're going to do it of close and you'll notice a little bit of helpful information under here as we're typing um, the close 14 period and semicolon and what we're going to say is if value 1 is greater or equal to 60 then value 2 equals text underscore new and this is how we do draw text on a chart and you'll see again we've got a useful little bit of information here and it's telling me that the first thing we need to put in is a date then time so we're doing it for the current date and the current time of the current bar or rather the uh, the date and time of the bar we're analyzing as we go through the chart and we're going to put it at the lower the bar and then the only thing that's slightly complicated here is that text new is expecting a string and we've we want to plot a number so what we have to do is convert the the number into a string we say num to string and the uh, the number that we're going to convert is value 2 and it also wants to know how many decimal places so we close that bracket close the bracket of the uh, the text new and I think it's going to put semicolon press F3 to verify that and I've already applied this to the chart so what we should now see is that when the RSI is over 60 you'll see the uh, the value of the RSI plotted there uh, now first of all you'll notice something's amiss here because that's plotting these numbers 293 294 295 and that's because what I've done by mistake is instead of value 1 being the RSI value I've plotted the actual value of the uh, the drawing object so I'm just going to change that to value 1 and just go back and we should see a more meaningful printout there we go so you'll see here if we hover over there that um, the where well, you can't see it's below but the the RSI is 63.64 and that's plotting on the chart there okay so I also want to just demonstrate some other behavior here and that is what is happening if the RSI is being updated on the last bar of the chart so we're going to make a few changes to this program just so I can demonstrate that and uh, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to clear the print log so we're going to be looking at the print log as we uh, as we do this so I'm going to say clear print log semicolon and that's just going to clear the print log every time this thing is applied to a chart and what we're going to say here because um, because we need we want to actually see this I'm just going to reduce this value here and we're going to do two things so when the value is over we're going to still draw, we'll draw the uh, the text object as we've just been doing but what I also want to do is say if last bar on chart which is the uh, the, the bar that's happening at the moment then we're going to do a print statement we're going to say print and we're going to say date time value 2 this is remember the uh, the value being returned by the the drawing object and also the RSI value 
So I'm just putting the text that I want to appear in quotes and then we know that the uh, RSI value is going to be value 1. So I'm going to close the bracket and put in an end statement. So what we've done now is we've just modified the program so that if uh, the value is over a certain level, not only do we draw it on the chart, but we also print something if it's the last bar on chart. So we're, we're going to draw the text anyway, but if it's the last bar on chart, we're also going to print it. So it's going to validate that, and then we'll just see what is happening here. Okay, so I made it over 50, so you can see that the last value is um, is occurring. Let me just zoom in on that so you can see a little a little more clearly, and you'll notice that the value is actually being updated in real time. Uh, in fact, okay, so what is of interest though, if we look at the print log, and I've uh, detached the, uh, the print log from the chart here, and we're just going to go up and see it. And you'll notice that this uh, this last bar, which is being updated, 10.55, you'll see that the uh, the value of the drawing object is the same. So what effectively the program is doing is it's changing the value as it goes along, um, 8.24, 8.24, and you can see some other values that it's occurred there. But um, the the value of the drawing object is staying the same. So we just rewriting, redrawing the drawing object on top of itself. Uh, we're not drawing a new drawing object every tick. So I think that's just worth uh, worth noting. So I'm just going to zoom in again, see 51.81 and you can see that uh, as it changes, it changes in the print log. It's also changing on the chart above. Anyway, um, that is a, a very simple tutorial. I hope, uh, hope that might be of interest to you. Uh, if you have any ideas of things that you'd like me to cover um, in the future, then please don't hesitate to, uh, to send me an email. It's always good to get new ideas. And again, if you're not part of the email list, then please go to markplex.com and uh, sign up and I'll send you emails when I create new tutorials or programs. Thank you very much.